So uh, in this lesson that's not really a lesson, I just want to run you through a few little tips and tricks for your exams, a few of my recommendations. There's going to be about 10 of them, but I might think of more as we go. So my very first piece of advice here would be, don't panic. Do not go into these exams thinking, oh God, maths is horrible, I'm going to fail. Don't think like that at all. Go into these exams thinking, right, I'm going to do whatever I can do. If I pass, I pass, great. If I don't, it's not the end of the world. Exams, on the whole, are not life-defining. It's not like if you um, pass these exams, you're guaranteed to go on and do great, amazing, wonderful things. And conversely, if you don't pass them... It's not like your whole life is going to be put in um, some sort of permanently bad state. Um, we can always retake if we want to. We don't have to remember. Not every single person in the world is a natural born mathematician. Some of you will go on to be actors. Some will go on to be musicians, artists, directors dancers we will all go on to do completely different things not everybody is born to do maths there's an awesome little quote that floats around quite a lot it's um, quite very often um, supposedly quoted by Albert Einstein now I'm not sure if it actually was him that quoted it but it's along the lines of uh, everybody is a genius, but if we judged a fish's ability to climb a tree, we would uh, judge it as not being that good a climber, which uh, is quite apt to, well, any subject really. Nobody in the world can do every single subject. Everybody has their own given talent, their own strengths and their own weaknesses. For example... I can't sing, I can't play a violin, I can't paint a masterpiece. Yes, I can do maths, but I can't do those other things. Some of you guys will be going, well, I can do that. So, well done on you guys. So, focus on your strengths. Okay. My second bit of advice would be, before your exam, make sure you have a nice hearty meal. The last thing you want is to be sat in your exam and think, oh man, I'm really hungry. Really wish I'd eaten before this. So fill the tank and uh, then you won't have that as a distraction. Uh, my third bit of advice, take the right equipment. Don't turn up to an exam without any pens, pencils or anything. So what I would recommend, take two or three pens, take two or three pencils, take a ruler, take a protractor, Take a compass, ideally already fully loaded with a pencil, so you haven't got to fiddle around with that in the exam. Take a pencil sharpener. Take a, a rubber. And if it's your calculator paper, funnily enough, take a calculator. Now, don't be panicking. I always remember I used to worry my calculator would run out of batteries in the exam. They will have contingency calculators if that happens, and even if you forget it. But try not to forget your calculator. If your calculator paper, it plays quite a big role. Okie dokie, the next one. They nowadays seem to quite like asking you multiple choice questions. Um, now, even if you come to a multiple choice question and you haven't got a clue on what the answer is, just put a ring around something. So, you are infinitely more likely to get a question right if you answer it than if you leave it completely blank. So, the multiple choice questions, make sure you answer every single one of them. Even if you've got no idea, do not leave them blank. Um, crossing out any workings that you've done that you think are wrong. Now, if anybody could see my final physics paper from uni they would probably wonder how the hell did anybody actually mark this and make any sense out of any of it 
I remember my head went quite blank um, in this exam. It had been after a week, week full of three hour exams and my head just wasn't there. Um, but I made sure that I crossed out anything that I decided was definitely wrong. Uh, so hopefully, well, it must have been the fate of the case that my lecturer did manage to pick out the stuff that I wanted to be marked. And obviously I must have picked out some marking uh, works there, marks there, because I did come out of it with a degree, thank God. So cross out anything that you don't want to be marked, okay? Which also takes us on to our workings out. Now, in the big mark questions, the four, five, six markers, most of your marks come from your workings out. Um, so you want to make sure on a four, five, six mark question, you're not just writing down two lines. You want to basically write down everything that is going through your mind. And again, even if you are doing them wrong, you very often pick up marks for using the right method. So even if you don't get to the right answer, you will pick up so many marks in your workings out. Which brings us to one of my favourite movie quotes of all time, by old Captain Jack Sparrow, who says it is not about the destination so much as the journey, which we can relate to exams. It's not about the answer so much as your workings out. Okay, so you pick up more marks for your workings out than you do for a correct answer. Obviously, correct answers are good, because we'll get a mark there, but we don't necessarily need to panic about getting or not getting the right answer. Get your workings out down. And on that note as well, I would heavily recommend not to um, use atomically small writing. So we're going to rub out Mr. Smiley face. So instead of writing stuff like this size, write stuff more like this size. Okay, if you're writing at an atomic level, I think from experience it just makes it so much easier to make a mistake. Whereas if you write things nice and big, it's nice and clear, you can read it easily, you're not squinting, uh, and generally it's probably easier to work through something nice and big instead of something nice and small. Uh, remember if you run out of room in your exam, you can ask for more paper, as much extra paper as you like. So write things nice and big instead of atomically small. Now if you're finding yourself getting worn out or you found a question that you can't do, or you're starting to feel like your brain's just uh, having a bit of a meltdown, take a take a 30 second break or whatever, close your eyes, put your head back, count to 30, go to your happy place maybe, get your favourite song playing in your head, just chill out a little bit, recompose yourself, after 30 seconds, open your eyes, look back at the question, crack back on with it. If you come across a question that you feel is taking too much time, say it's a trial and error question maybe, or you've come across a question that you don't think you can do, move on from it. Don't dwell on it. Time when you're in exam papers just flies. I swear down, exam time is the fastest time that I've ever experienced. Again, all of my exams at uni with three hours, you go in thinking, man, that's gonna last forever. What am I gonna do with three hours? And you're in there for about what feels like a quarter of an hour maybe. And oh crikey, an hour's gone already. So do not dwell on a single question for too long. If you finish the paper and you know you didn't do the question, go back to it and have another go. Just don't waste too much time on a single question. Now on that note, if we do come to a question and it looks really intimidating and we think, oh man, that's pretty scary. So something like algebraic fractions for the higher lot or thirds or in the foundation, the questions that have got a lot of words and things. Pull out the information that you've got from the question and consider what you can actually do with that information. 
very often there's only really one or two things you can do at the start of a question. So try and work out what you can actually do with the information that you are given at the start. Okay, uh, what else have we got? I think that brings us to my last point. When you finish your exam, I know we're all very tempted to do it, we want to talk with our friends and compare our answers uh, to certain questions, but the truth of it is, even if you and your friend get either the same answer, or you both get a different answer, there's no way of telling if that was right or wrong. Don't stress yourself out after an exam. Don't talk about answers to certain questions, just let it go. The exam is done, chill out afterwards, okay? Don't put yourself through the stress because if you get different answers, it's going to stress you out and think, oh man, which one of us is right, which one of us is wrong. Um, just chill out, go go for a surf, listen to some music, watch your favourite film, chill out after your exam, don't worry about it, it's in the past. Nothing can change what you put or didn't put for an answer. Okay, so those would be my pieces of advice. Obviously, we've got the usual teacher slash parent ones as well. Read a question really carefully. Turn up in plenty of time. Do not be late to your exam. That's not a good start. Um, we have read questions carefully, very, very carefully. If you have time at the end, don't sit in your exam and can't count the tiles on the roof or whatever. Go back through the paper, check your workings out at least once, ideally, even two times. As usual time wisely. Okay, these exams are going to be over soon and you're going to have all the free time in the world. So, good luck. Try and stay nice and chilled. And do not panic, guys, okay? Good luck.